Hello everyone, my name is Robin Gray and I will be presenting my topic about nanoparticles and their interaction with plants. Before we get into it, I wanted to show the highlights of what I will be covering. First, we will discuss what are nanoparticles, where can we find nanoparticles, how are they used, and how does their size influence reactivity and interactions with living things, we will look at different types of nanoparticles and then how they may affect plant species. Then we'll discuss recent research of nanoparticles interacting with plants. Nanoparticles, or NPs, sound a little complex, a little complicated, but in reality, it just really describes size. Nano means something really, really small. An example to kind of get into your head of how small these nanoparticles are, if you took a thousand nanoparticles and lined them all up, it would go across the tip of your hair. So these are really, really small particles. And they can also be defined as particles with sizes between 1 and 100 nanometers. Nanoparticles are not new to the environment and occur naturally in the form of minerals, clays, and products of bacteria. Nanoparticles can come from bulk material. Bulk material, material are those dry materials which are powdery, granular, and lumpy in nature, and are stored in heaps such as m minerals, ores, coal, sand, salt, chemical, sugar, flour, etc. They can also be found in volcanic ash, ocean spray, dust, and even biological matter. The key difference between bulk matter and nano is related to their size. Nanoparticles have been used since ancient times as a colorant for metals. However, however today, the systematic design and engineering of these nanoparticles for various uses has started really picking up in the last few decades. So where can we find nanoparticles? Nanoparticles are being used in various household and industrial products. We see nanoparticles currently used in things like our cell phone batteries. Pharmaceutical industries use them where they use MPs to deliver those active ingredients to help improve health. Um, solar cells to harvest sunlight and turn that into energy. And textiles, such as exercise clothes that may have anti-smell properties and usually that is due to the presence of NPs incorporated into the fibers. And then things like sunscreen with titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which commonly contains NPs. So nanoparticles are being massively produced in, com in commercial and industrial products. As nanoparticles are being massively produced, a question that is brought up is how NP's size influences reactivity in living things. And remember, so NP's are really small. And through different researches, we found that they behave differently and have unique properties that make them very attractive for technology, such as nanotechnology. So the engineered NP's are designed to have properties which are not present in bulk samples of the same materials. These types of NPs are composed of a variety of materials and occurs in different sizes and shapes with a suit of synthetic surface molecules which makes them distinct from naturally occurring materials. These non-bulk properties of NPs with their atypical surface structures and relativity may enhance processes such as dissolution, redox reactions, and the generation of reactive oxygen species. These properties may be accompanied by biological effects that would not be produced by larger particles of the same chemical composition, aka these nanoparticles differ from bulk samples due to their size. So, because NPs are so small, this is a very important thing to note. Small sizes creates more surface area. With more surface area, this creates more activity. Therefore, there are more spaces and places where chemistry reactions can occur. So, high surface area leads to higher reactivity. So, as the demand and production of nanomaterials or nanoparticles are increasing, thus their availability in air, soil, and water systems are increasing too. 
this makes NPs have the potential for making its way into the environment, which can cause possible problems. There are different types of nanoparticles, such as inorganic and organic nanoparticles. For this presentation, we will be looking at inorganic nanoparticles containing metal and metal oxide NPs, such as titanium dioxide, silver, zinc oxide, cerium dioxide, copper, copper oxide, aluminum, nickel, and iron, which are all commonly used in industries. As previously mentioned in the last slide, we know that the increasing production of nanoparticles increases the chances of NPs making their way into our environment. Examples of contamination can be seen from improper management of industrial waste or improper disposal of products by the users. One nanoparticle that has slash needs more attention is silver NPs, as they are in intensively used in various products such as antimicrobial agents, shampoo, soap, toothpaste, wastewater treatment, food packaging materials, food storage containers, fabrics, room sprays, detergent, paints, etc. But due to its extensive use, the production of NPs are increasing rapidly, among which the U.S. itself has been reported to produce 2,500 tons per year of silver NPs of which around 150 tons end up in sewage sludge and 80 tons in surface waters. Through sludge and surface water of silver and peas, these may easily reach the surrounding environments and especially plants. So plants are in continuous interaction with air, soil, and water, all of which contain engineered nanoparticles. As the plants are also consumed by animals, the NPs may be transferred to them. This is a risk that NPs could invade the food chain and become dangerous to humans. This is especially important as the excessive usage of NPs and their abundance in the environment is increasing, and as a result, both plants and animals may become the source of NPs for humans. Therefore, there has been studies and research done over the different effects of nanoparticles on plants especially in agricultural practices on a variety of crop species. What has been reported is both negative and positive effects of NPs on plant function and development. Some positive effects of different nanoparticles on plant functions are seed germination, plant biomass and root elongation, increased production, rate of photosynthesis, and psychostimulatory effect of NPs on flowering. On the flip side, negative effects have been reported, which have seen plant growth inhibition, inhibition of seed germination, photosynthesis, re reduced pigment production in plants, and disruption in root systems. With different outcomes of effects of NPs on plant functions, researchers have reported that crop toxicity mainly depends on the concentration, exposure time, growth media, shape, and size of nanoparticles or nanomaterials. They have seen NPs capable of entering living tissues and migrating di to different parts of crop species. However, it is still not clear as to how some crops select NPs or NMs and reject others. So this is a major topic of interest. You can see in this figure here two different agricultural crops pointing out nanomaterials exposure to either the leaf and other aerial parts or strictly M NM's exposure to the root and rhizospheres and the many different inter interactions that can occur. Now we will be looking into an actual study between nanoparticles and its effect on food crops such as wheat. Wheat is a monocotyledon grass plant that is widely cultivated throughout the world. More than 40% of the protein that the human body consumes is supplied by wheat grain. As previously mentioned, I spoke about one particular nanoparticle, silver. Again, silver is one of the most commonly used metal-based nanoparticles in industries and agricultural practices. Therefore, it is important that we should look into the phytotoxicity of silver nanoparticles on wheat. 
The study that we will be discussing focuses on the alteration of crop yield and quality of wheat upon exposure to silver nanoparticles. The method involves different concentrations of silver nanoparticles in amended soils of 20, 200, and 2,000 milligrams for four months. We will be observing the physiological parameters of silver and micronutrients contents such as iron, copper, and zinc in edible portions of wheat, which will provide useful information for crop safety. Some background on the methodology and experimental design begins with the preparations of silver nanoparticles, which were pur purchased from Shanghai Panton Powder Material Company. Transmission electron microscopy was used to observe the particle morphology and measure the particle size distribution, which if you look to the photo to the left, you can see TEM images of silver nanoparticles used in this experiment. A observes a scale of 200 nanometers, while B is the enlarged drawing of panel A. For the wheat seeds used, they were purchased from the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences and were soaked in 10% sodium hypochlorite for 10 minutes, then rinsed with deionized water. For the pot experiment and plant growth conditions, they use experimental soil of sandy loam and 36 plastic pots, which were filled with three kilograms of soil mixed with silver nanoparticle powder based on the designated exposure doses of 20, 200, and 2,000. The nanoparticles amended soils were established for 24 hours prior to use. There were nine replicates in each treatment and four seeds of wheat with uniform size were planted in each pot. At maturity, three replicate pots were randomly selected from each treatment to determine the height of the aerial parts then harvested for biomass measurements. The measurements of silver and micronutrients were measured by ICPMS, or inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, and the whole wheat plant was separated into roots, shoots, grains, and their dry biomass, which will be grounded into fine powder and digested in a mixture of plasma for further analysis. Here we will see the results of the effects of silver nanoparticles to the wheat height and biomass. The first picture here shows the physiological parameters of wheat treated with the different concentrations of silver nanoparticles. We can see that silver NPs severely inhibited plant growth in terms of the plant size with increasing the exposure doses. The lowest exposure dose of wheat can visibly be seen as relatively smaller to the control, suggesting NP-induced phytotoxicity. Here we see a representation of the wheat's plant height. In figure B, in comparison to the control, there was a decrease in the plant height in a dose-response manner with increasing exposure doses, along with a decrease in its root length. For the wheat's fresh biomass in figure C, the fresh biomass of roots and shoots in the 20 mg exposure of silver NP treatment shows that it slightly increased, but it was insignificant relative to the control. In the 200 and 2000 treatments, the fresh biomass sharply decreased. Finally, we will quickly look at the contents of micronutrients and wheat grains. Micronutrients are necessary for plant normal growth and development. In this figure, it shows the contents of micronutrients iron, copper, and zinc in different silver and pea treated wheat grains. The reason these micronutrients were chosen are because of their important role in the plant. See, iron plays an important role in chlorophyll synthesis and is directly involved with plant photosynthesis, while zinc is an important component in auxin synthesis and in the enzymes of metal activators. Copper, on the other hand, can participate in electron transfer in the chloroplasts and mitochondria, as well as the oxidative stress of plants. The result for this experiment show a common trend among all three elements where the exposure to higher concentrations of silver and peas significantly lowered the nutrient contents in wheat grains. We can see visibly that this bar graph declines with the increase of exposure doses. Overall, the study suggested that silver nanoparticles significantly inhibited plant growth and delayed the wheat ripening along with altering the crop quality. 
The findings here could provide important and useful information for evaluation on the safety of metal-based nanoparticle application in agriculture and human health. Even though I focused on one particular nanoparticle, silver, there are several other types out there that is and should be studied as well. Nanoparticles are not only a major topic for agricultural practices, but should be studied in research for developing better plans and protection for the overall environment. Nanotechnology is becoming a bigger player in the realm of nanosciences, and research is just now beginning to scratch the surface of this large subject. And finally, these are my references, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you for listening, and have a nice day.